Music from Minnie Birch, Keep Right On To The End Of The Road. That's the, the harmony version, uh, very kindly done for us by Minnie. And um, you can find that, by the way, on her Bandcamp uh, website, if you want to uh, donate to Minnie for that lovely piece of music. Uh, keep right on to the end of the road. You're not kidding, because uh, it's the end of the road for Ita Karanka after what's been a, a disastrous uh, spell in charge. We all wondered after that, that, that terrible defeat by Bristol City whether this would happen. And uh, it appears that uh, Dong has uh, pressed the eject button, or at least somebody possibly has in, in, in Hong Kong and China. Um, confirmation to come uh, on that. And of course, we, we wonder who will be uh, replacing him. Now, uh, this has all happened very quickly. And um, the intention of this Blue Zoom was to speak to some of our overseas friends, some who used to live in Birmingham, come back regularly and... Um, I, on my travel, football travels around the world over the last 20, 25, 30 years, you, you always meet the Glory Hunter fans, Man United, Liverpool, all the usual suspects, but very few Blues. And um, it's great that uh, one of them, with the most unlikely place to be supporting Blues from, is with us this afternoon. Very pleased to say, Ralph Swedek. How are you, Ralph? Uh, thanks for having me, Chris. I'm fine. How are you guys? And where are you? I'm uh, in Tripoli, Libya. It's, uh, in Libya. The Northern, Leave it there for a uh, second because Africa. that's fascinating. Uh, next to, to Ralph is uh, some of the older Blues fans will, will know John Bradbury. Uh, looking very relaxed there, John, John, with your, your hand around the back of your head, lying on your bed in Australia. It's now midnight your time, I think. It's four o'clock as we record this in the UK. Uh, John's in, in Perth in Australia. And in the other corner, we've got uh, Lawrence Gagan, Lars, Lars, to his friends. He used to live in Spark Hill many years ago, Lars, right? Yep, correct. Yeah. Where are you now? Uh, New York. New York City. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, actually, Long Island, which is about an hour from Manhattan. Yeah, well, I was over in Long Island a couple of summers ago, right at the very the, the North Fork at the top end. You know the bit? Yeah, uh, you're, you're probably talking about Montauk. Sorry? Mont Montauk. Yeah, right that way, yeah, where they had the fireworks yeah. on the 4th of July. Yeah. Uh, welcome all, anyway. Um, so... Um, Indeed, keep right on to the end of the road. And let's, let's, let's start with John, John Bradbury. You've seen it all with, with, with Blues. Um, what, what are you thinking about um, Karanka going? Surprised, pleased, what? Well, he's got to go, Chris. He just has to go. It's just ridiculous he's been here that long. But the, what we, it's all right in going, but we need somebody in. I, I, don't know who they, I don't know who they've got in mind. They probably haven't got anybody in mind. So um, I don't really know what are you, what are the other guys' thoughts on who would come in because I don't want Tony Pulis. I've got a lot of friends who are Stoke fans and they hated him. Well, listen, he had a terrible um, time at Sheffield Wednesday, didn't he, this year? And <laughs> listen, if, if it is him, uh, it will be you know a short term, uh, a short term thing. You'd think to the end of the season, keep the club up. Uh, Ralph, you, you know your English football, uh, don't you? So what do you what do you think? Who who would you like to see? Well, if uh, the question was a few weeks back, I uh, would have uh, liked to see Nigel Pearson or maybe Paul, Paul Cook, but they, they both have a job right now. 
it's uh, a bit more difficult right now. And I think Neil Harris is a good option because we have to be realistic and think about uh, the fact that we might be relegated. And if we get, get someone like Tony Pulis, I don't think he stays for League One. I don't think he would. Uh, Neil Harris might stay if, uh, if there is a good project behind it. But again, it's very difficult uh, for me to, to say right now. I don't yeah. see anyone. It's a good shout, Neil Harris. Uh, he's, 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 he's got a he's got a, a decent pedigree. I mean, obviously, a long time at Millwall, and then ill-fated spell at Cardiff. Uh, Lars, what do you think? I mean, uh, it's well, a few candidates out there, but firefighter or a longer-term uh, person? Which yeah, way? Wilder leaving Sheffield United, he would be an option because I think he took him out of the League One into the Premiership. I'm not sure. Chris Wilder, that. yeah, yeah. So he might be a good option to have. Um, if Pulis comes, it's like a red nap again, isn't it? Stay to the end of the year, and I can't see him staying after that. So uh, Walden might be. I, I don't know if we'll get him because he's probably too expensive anyway. Yeah, bear in mind that you know Dong will be trying to find somebody. I mean, two days ago it was it, you know there was not going to be a change, so there's going to have to be somebody available. And the biggest problem with Dong has been that you know his strategy and long-term thinking and the whole thing with recruitment has been a disaster so it's likely to be who, who's available who can who can do it um so uh yeah i mean john bradbury you're looking very relaxed there mate I, i've got to say i mean i know it's the middle of the night for you but um do you feel relaxed at that news i'm very relaxed with it yeah well to be honest with you chris i thought i thought you were ringing me tomorrow night i wasn't <laughs> expecting it and the thing is my wife's my wife uh, as you know, traveling around the world is, is out. But my wife's actually in Plymouth right now. She's, I put her back on a plane yesterday. Her mum's dying in uh, Plymouth. So we got compassionate. Then, yeah. So my I'm wife's been calling me. On the, yeah, well, it's one of those things. And, and um, you know, so I was just falling asleep when you rang me. I thought, who's that? And then um, I've been, just been watching... Um, I just was cheering Norwich's second goal against um, Sheffield Wednesday. I thought to myself, well, that's good. at least they've lost. Yeah. And um, yesterday's results were not that good for us with um, Huddersfield winning and uh, Wickham winning. I watched Wickham. Have you seen Wickham's goal, by the way? No, against, well, they're, they're a funny team, aren't they? They can beat anybody sometimes. But, uh, but yeah, they're going down, I think, uh, as the Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. It's just the other one, really. Um, but, but, look, Paul, I wanted, I wanted Paul Cook as a manager. I've loved Paul Cook for so long. And I know someone that knows him really well. I've got a friend who works at the Leeds setup who told me about Karanka a while back. He said, you've got a very difficult manager there, a very difficult character. He's very stubborn. And you've got to realise he's a Basque. And Basque are notorious for stubborn people. They're a stubborn race of people. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> and, uh, very true. true. Um, and he said, you've just got to be careful. And, you know, I mean, Chris, I mean, Chris, ever since Carson Young has been off the scene, I mean, I went to his trial in Hong Kong. I was one of the only three Westerners in the, in the, in the courthouse. And I'll never forget when the judge said to me, as an, as an overview, where do, you get, where, do you, where do you get your income from? And he said, I'm an international hairdresser. And, he got, and the judge said, 81 million pounds? And, you know, I started laughing. I couldn't stop laughing in the court. Yeah. I, just... I didn't know you anyway, were there, John. I know Dan I... Ivory was there, wasn't he? Was he, was he a, did you, do you know Daniel? It, was, yeah, was... Daniel was there. He had, he had a mate from Corby. He had a friend from Corby who had winkle pickers on. <laughs> and there was me. And there was me. There was three of us there. That's it. Yeah, well, listen, you're kind of the international super fan, John. I've known you for, for a long time. You know, we used to bump into each other at games years ago. Uh, is it true, Loz, you were telling me that you, you, you have memories of John from 1973. Is that right? Yeah, so we, we played Leicester City first game of the season, I believe. And the score was 3-3. Was you at that game? Was I at the game? I was going to say, we played Leicester in 71 at Leicester. We won 4-1 away. I remember I that, that one. Yeah. I went to that. Um, that we was brilliant that day. We were sensational that day. Well, white kit, three, three. That, John? white kit that day. Bob Latchford scored about two or three, didn't he? Yeah, I think I think you're right, Chris. I, yeah. I remember the game because I hitchhiked from Bognor Regis. <laughs> I hitchhiked. Well, 
I, I hate, well, I, no, I went by train, but I was a real, Chris, I don't really want to admit this, and if anyone from British Rail is there, but I never used to pay on the trains. I was a shocker. I was a shocker, mate. And I tell you, I used to give, I used to give Roger Moore's address to two Lady Byron Lane, solely all, if they, if, they, if they wrote to me for the ticket money. Um, and that, that was his address in, in, in Noel. Um, uh, and I was a nightmare. I don't remember the 3-3. Three, three, what? Do you remember me from the 3-3 three, three game? Um, uh, like I said, you know Gibbo and from Torquay? Oh, I know Gibbo. Yeah. Dave Gibson. Yeah. He lives in he South Africa, doesn't he? He's his brother, yeah. Are you his brother? No, I'm not his brother. No, I just know them back from back when we was uh, going to games. Too. Oh, yeah, I know Gibbo. I remember Dave Gibson very well. He was yeah. from Sheldon. That's right, yeah. He so lived he, in Sheldon with... And Lars, so you, you left Birmingham in, 80, in the early 80s, didn't 82, you? 82, yeah. From Spark Hill, yeah? Yeah, yeah, from Spark Hill, 82. It's in New York. We, we, we can pick up a bit of your accent, yeah. You're sort of... Uh, in and out, right? You're still a bit brummy, but, but yeah, not too, you know, you're a bit yank as well, huh? No, no, let's not get carried away now. <laughs> can, I, can I just come in? Brummy, go on, I know you can't get a word in edgeways when you're on, John, but go on. No, but it's funny. When I, look, I, I, was in, I was in New York. I was in... Long Island at Hofstra Stadium um, in 70, oh, 76, 77. And I was working at the All-American Soccer Camp in Poughkeepsie. And I was at Hofstra and I was doing a coaching session. And this guy came up to me. He said, look, you didn't do too badly there. He said, are you from Birmingham? I said, yeah. He said, do you know me? I said, no. He said, I'm Joe Mallet. I went, oh, okay. I hadn't got a bloody clue. I hadn't got a clue. I didn't no, recognize him. Trevor, was he? So, yeah, well, it was, I was in the American scene for quite a while then. I, I, uh, Garden City, we had, we had a team over, actually in Spark Hill, would you believe? They came over and played us. Um, we, had, we went over there and they came over. I had friends in Spark Hill, in Avondale Road, off Stratford Road. And, um, and uh, I spent a lot of time in America, Chris. I, I, I knew a lot of people there in, in the old Cos in the um, New York Cosmos set Cosmos, of Cosmos, the 70s. Um, I could tell you loads of stories, but I won't bore you. I could tell I'm you such of stories. Loads of them. John, because I want to, I, I, the intention of this program was yeah, I'll go back along. finding overseas fans. And there have been a few people who have been a bit shy to come on, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but there are Blues fans all over the place. And real pl but, but I've got to say, you know, Ralph Swedek in, in, in Tripoli, Libya, is uh, is fantastic. How is it, Ralph, that with all those, you know, I mean, we know English clubs are well followed in Africa, but how how is it that you supported Birmingham City? Um, it's just a coincidence, you know. Uh, the Premier League and. I was watching all those teams and play, and I didn't have any affiliation with any of them. I, I used to like uh, Fulham. I used to like Chelsea. I was watching a lot of teams, but at the end of the 2005-2006 season, uh, there was a game between Blackburn and Birmingham at St. Andrews. Uh, this was the season the team eventually got relegated with Steve Bruce. And uh, we were one nil down, I think, or I think it was a draw, maybe. And right at the end, we scored a goal, and the stadium went crazy. I remember at that at that moment exactly. I I was in love with the football club. You know, it, it happened all of, a, all of a sudden. And you know, I I kept watching the team, but. I ruined the season probably because they never won a single game after that. Uh, yeah. and, well, listen, well done for you for, to, yeah. to keep on following, but it obviously had an effect yeah. on you and you, you're, still, you're still following the club now. Um, are, there any other, are there any other Birmingham fans in Libya? Uh, no. <laughs> just no fans here. Yeah, just me. I, if there is, I, I don't know. Yeah, well, well, well done you. Have you ever been to Birmingham? Yeah, the next year... Uh, the same year, I think, um, my father had a job thing in London, and we went there, the whole family, and I insisted on, on going and seeing the club, you know, and he, he agreed to it. He was quite excited. He's a Liverpool fan. He was a Liverpool fan. 
and he took me there, but we couldn't get into the stadium. So I just saw the stadium from the inside, uh, the outside, and we took pictures and like that. I also went to the uh, Arena and I think in Coventry, and they didn't let let me in as well. So yeah, but I you should have I told went. them you'd come all the way from Libya. They would have let you in. That's a real that's a real shame. And uh, yeah, they tried to. Unfortunately, we didn't have time. They they said next week we can let you in. We were going back, uh, and there was no time, unfortunately. Well, we'll we'll, we'll try and we'll try and arrange for you to to, to come over because that you know that's uh, that's great. And I, yeah. and I you know Libya, it's a it's a long way from Birmingham, isn't it? Let's be honest. And um, uh, <laughs> is it, what the domestic football is is what's it like? Is it is it is it uh, is it good or not? Uh, it was good before the 2010 revolution. I don't know if you know about that. About what? Gaddafi. Uh, Gaddafi. Uh, yes, it was in the news all the time, and we yeah, remember yeah. the pictures and the and, the, and the, 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 the the crowds on the streets and the the shooting and everything. We remember yeah. it very very well. There hasn't there hasn't been any football actually. The the, the, the fans haven't been allowed at any stadiums for the past twelve years. Uh, twelve years. Lit, yeah. Yeah. Stadium bans all over the country because the because you know firearms everywhere and they can't allow people to enter the stadium. It's dangerous, obviously. Uh, the league uh, is all, has always been played behind closed doors. The four times the season was abandoned. The the football here is not good anymore. It used to be actually back in the eighties, but right now the football is struggling. Well, so so the, the the sight of empty stadiums with the with the COVID pandemic I makes mean, this you, you've been used to that for for several years, I guess. Sorry, the, the sight of empty stadiums as we have in the in the UK at the moment, uh, you, it's, it's it's something you've been used to in in Libya then. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, uh, it became normal to us because the, there was no way people would be allowed stadiums because of the what's going on in the country and hopefully uh, by next year they said maybe they start about fans back in after the pandemic maybe yeah. is over because i don't know why but honestly, a flashback. Did, bringing people back in the pandemic happened mm. didn't, didn't gaddafi john john you'll know this didn't gaddafi's son wasn't he a footballer gaddafi's son yeah he played, he he played in italy yeah it's true isn't it he played in italy he wasn't as good as what he thought. He just got in because of his name, really. But yeah. that, that, this, this chap in Libya that you're speaking to, he's absolutely unbelievable sport in the Blues. I take my hat oh, off to right. him. Ralph, you were going to get you over. And you're going to come to a game. and we're no, gonna, I, we'll, 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 Yeah, we'll get, we'll get him over, Chris. Get him over. I'll, I'll, I'll sponsor him if he wants. Oh, I, I don't, it's, it's unbelievable. Thank Chris, you. how did you find him, Chris? Oh, I found you on you on Twitter. I saw you, Ralph. You know, I mean, Twitter's an amazing place. There's a, no, there are a number of Blues fans in Brazil as well. Uh, I've been to Brazil twice on football trips, and it's an, a remarkable place to visit. I mean, it really is. There's nothing quite like it because you know, that, as you know, I mean, the, the people live and breathe the game there, and you get fans of all all clubs. You'd be amazed who you, you get fans of you who support you know all different types in in, in Brazil. Uh, it, it's part of the of the way of life. Um, but listen, um, let let us you know. Let us, let us, the, the pressing matter, as it's just, just, just dropping about, about, um, about Karanka going. Uh, Lars, what do you, what do you, I mean, the way forward, I mean, I don't know how closely, do you, do you come back to Brum very often? Yeah, funny enough, you're talking about COVID. This time last year, we were supposed to play West Brum. Game got cancelled. We were sitting in Hennessy's having a drink and there was a few Coventry fans in there. And um, I had to rebook my flight back home in the bar because uh, of the, the lockdown was coming. So I had to uh, fly back to New York uh, the next day so I wouldn't get shut out. And, you know, wow. cause after that, then they saw all these personal lockdowns came down. But I get over about three or four times a year. Good for you. Yeah. And um, I don't know many New York Blues fans. I know there's Blues fans in New York, but because of Blues TV, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm at home every Saturday, 10 o'clock, watching Blues TV and watching yeah, games. Yeah. And before that, it was the old um, listening to Tom Ross and attacking one end and then, oh, no, we've just given up a goal. <laughs> <laughs> Occupational hazard, yeah. 
But uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a strong football culture, though, in M NYC. I mean, I was there in the World Cup in 94, and, you know, I mean, all the bars were full of football fans, you know. It was all the Irish were just everywhere. Um, yeah. Uh, I remember bumping into um, Roy Keane's parents, you know, <laughs> before the, the, the amazing game against uh, Italy, um, uh, Ireland. Amazing. But, um, but there is a, a strong culture. Do, do, you, do you kind of find when you're abroad, Lars, that, you know, you're sort of fighting the corner a bit and they're going, who, Birmingham? You know, what you support them for? Oh, yeah. No one knows about that. Well, I've tried to preach the gospel to them, but they just don't get it. They're all <laughs> Liverpool, Man United, yeah. and all them rubbish yeah. teams. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, uh, the, the football over here I coached soccer over here for about 20 years my son went to Stony Brook and played in Stony Brook College I met Gary Ablett out here too he was out here for a little while unfortunately yeah As we rest, know, rest in peace there. Gary yeah we lost him a few yeah. years ago didn't we terrible yeah he was out there and I actually coached against him in a game yeah. Yeah. John what are you doing what are you shuffling your papers there or... <laughs> it's horizontal I know it's no, no, no. I was just, I was just gonna, I was just gonna open the bedroom um, door a bit more, but I just suddenly realised I was going off video to do it. I did, sorry, I was just. <laughs> I forgot, uh, I forgot. I'm just trying to think. What, what, Perth. What, what month are we in? March. You still got hot weather, have you? I suppose. It's been, it's been warm all the way through since, um, since about October, really November. Yeah. It's been very humid lately, which is um, a nuisance. Yeah. Uh, this hasn't been humid the last two nights, and it doesn't, doesn't matter. I'm, I'm all air conditioned if I really want it. Um, it's been pretty warm. Yeah, it's been warm. Twenty two at night, thirty three in the day, and all that business. Yeah. Um, and um, it'll it'll cool down as it'll start cooling down, but not just yet. It might take another month yet. But um, we, we we've been watching the local Perth Glory team. There's a guy actually. There's a guy. Somebody said to me, oh, there's, there's a bloke from Birmingham playing for the local Perth team. So I Googled all the names and I found him. His name was Timmins or something. Chris, he's from Birmingham and he, was, he played for the Blues. Really? Um, I yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think his name was Timmins. Timmis. Timmis okay. or Timmins. Timmins. Any good? Um, no, he's only got one leg. No, 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 he's all right now. <laughs> Um, uh, but, uh, this, know, do, do, do you find yourself though in Perth? Do you do you find yourself? To, you know, like Luz was saying, you know, you have to defend the corner a bit and you give it loads back. I do because I'm, I've got BCFC registration plates on my vehicle, and that's really uh, I, I've had people stop me. I had oh, I had a Bristol City fan stop me about three months ago. I said you're the bugger with them. I've been trying to get these plates. He said you've got them. And I'm the only one with them. That's the only one re registered. And I drive everywhere and I get pumps. So I've had guys. I had one guy last week. He works for Main Rose Department. He's a big blues fan. I don't know who he was. His name was Tom something like that. And he saw my plates. He couldn't believe it. He said, blimey. He said, I can't believe this. So I've been here four years. And I've met, I've met loads of Man United fans, but never any Birmingham fans. I can't believe it. And, um, yeah, it, there's, I've got blues fans. There's blues fans in Perth. There's a few of us. There's Terry Ross. I mean, Ross, the guy, he might know Terry Ross. He's called, his nickname's Rooster. He's from, um, he's from Acot Screen. Um, he's one of the originals in the 60s. Um, he lives there. I've seen him quite a bit. And there's uh, Bob Danks. He's a customs officer. He's from King's Heath, the police. He's That's a police, ex -police King's officer. King's Pardon? King's Heath is my patch. I know, yeah. Bob, 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 was, Bob left King's Heath in 60 something. He said he used to, he used to, be on patrol of the blues walking around in the old days and he was telling me the other week someone said oh it's which goalkeeper what a goalie caught him he said excuse me the crowd's giving me a hard time here she said, what do you expect me to do i can't do anything about that get lost and um bob's bob's the original from king's Eve. I, I do see blues fans, i do see blues fans here but chris i mean you don't know i mean i spent three years around australia um, door knocking, selling door to door for a living. I, I spent, I lived three years in a Volkswagen and I met loads of blues fans. Mate. You have no idea. Yeah, I, can I could tell you, especially over that part. Of now, it. I'll tell you what, I tell you, I, 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 won't, I won't steal this show because it's every. I was in 1981, the FA Cup final, Man City Spurs was a draw. I was in Seduna, which is in South Australia. It's the last place with fresh water. And they said, replay Wednesday. So I drove across the Nullarbor Plain, which is the longest, straightest road in the world, I reckon. It's just because I'm for miles, thousand miles. Anyhow, I got to a place called Cambelda, which is a mining town. 
and I'm door knocking, just looking. Not, I'm not looking to sell it. I'm just looking for a TV to watch the game. And about the 10th door I knocked on, a guy from Chelmsley, he would open the door called Maurice Hassan. I knew him. I knew him, but I couldn't, I couldn't get my breath. I, was, I just could not believe the guy from Chelmsley would open his door. And I stayed with him a week. And um, that's, you know, I could tell you story after story, Chris. In the just middle of door nowhere. Knocking Extraordinary. The middle of nowhere. This, is the, this is the middle of nowhere, this is. I bet it was, yeah. I mean, I mean, I bet, yeah. I mean, that's that. That is Nullarbor Plain. Wow, that is just that. That is the the centre of nothingness. Um, listen, we, we haven't got a massive amount of time here, so um, let, let us go back to the 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 the, the moment. Then, come on, uh, Karanka going. Um, are the club going to stay up? Let's. We don't know who's going to come in, but I, I think it'll be a firefighter probably. And then you know, and I, I don't want Pulis either. I don't think it's the, it's the right thing, but. You know, something's going to happen or else the club is going to go down and it's not easy to get out of League One. Um, Lars, do you, do you think Blues will survive, given the, the, this news? Until we're mathematically relegated, of course. But realistically, it's going to be very tough, isn't it? The only good thing is we've got to play a couple of teams that's around us and they're going to be six-pointers. Um, Derby, Rotherham, um, get points. The next couple of games are going to be tough to get anything from. But you never know if they, you know, everyone's been calling for four, four, two, or two up front, and um, that might help us depending on who comes in. But um, the, the defense has been. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Karanka, to... the start of it, Karanka, when he first came in, Blues didn't concede anything, and then and then yeah. something went wrong, didn't it? When he tried to try and expand it, it just the defense now is absolutely terrible. Let's let's make no bones about it. Yeah, I mean, that's... Harley Dean, and that is really struggling. Whether, you know, this injection now will, um, I've got to admit, I thought the players were playing for Karanka until the last month has been very difficult, hasn't it? I mean, it, yeah. it really has. I, I've ch I, I changed my mind. I mean, I, I thought he could turn it round, but, um, you know, something has happened the last few weeks where his, his body language has just collapsed. Um, Ralph, what do you think? Did you, do you expect um, the Blues to stay up or not? Um. Well, I think there is a major factor in the fact that uh, Rotherham have four games in hand uh, more than us. They will have to play their uh, 14 games in like five or six weeks. That's I think a fact. that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, what kind of teams uh, will they play? Maybe they'll play against teams who are playing for nothing anymore. And... Well, that, this helped us helped us before because I remember uh, beating Huddersfield when they were already promoted the playoffs or go to the Premier League, and they played with the substitutes, and this really helps uh, the teams below. You know, yeah. Uh, I think we have to beat them when we play them. I yeah. think well, we probably, well, but Rotherham Blues and is we have to beat the. Rotherham Blues have got to go to Rotherham, haven't they? In That's April. Be a huge game, clearly. Um, yeah, uh, in April. But, um, I think Blues, so yeah, uh, Rotherham, I think um, Sheffield Wednesday have got Huddersfield this week, and Blues have got Reading on Wednesday night, which, uh, with a new man in charge, will be very interesting. He's going to have one day to... Uh, and the word is that there will be somebody in charge by Wednesday. So that, to me, says firefighter. No question about it. Um, do you know what? I'd love to see Harry come back. I know people will laugh at that, but... If you want somebody to come in and do something and get players playing, there's your man. Uh, he did it before. You're going to laugh, John, or are you going to agree with me? He's falling asleep. You still there, John? <laughs> <laughs> if your line has gone down, John, you, you, we can see a picture of you and you look as though you're asleep. <laughs> but I know you wouldn't be because um, you're a staunch Blues fan. And um, you... Oh, he's gone. Um, I better do you not Well, put... <laughs> Good night, Perth. Um, it's a long way away, but uh, John is a, 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 a. Anybody watching this, you know, from from the old days, will know John is. He's a, um, he, he he told me the other day that he he, he was at the the, the uh, Hand of God game in in South America, which he blagged his way into uh, in Mexico, the, uh, the the Maradona ring game. Uh, a proper fan now now living in Australia, and um, we'll get John on again because he's a he's a fantastic character. Um, so we got four minutes left. So um, yeah. If, what would you, what would you, Ralph, what would you, if you were the manager now and you went in there knowing what you do um, and 
let's not talk about the, the ownership. The ownership of Blues is a disaster. We know that. And that is, to me, is the, is the, is the, is the, is the deep lying. I've said it all along. The, the deep lying problem is the ownership. And, you know, that, that is, if Blues go down or not this year, that's got to be addressed. But uh, if you were, Ralph, going in there, you said, what would you, what would you be saying to the players? Well, uh, I think uh, the players are motivated. I don't buy the, th the fact that some people say they are not uh, playing for the club or they are not pas passionate enough. I think they are limited. I, I don't think we have the best squad in the league, but certainly they're not the worst team in the league by any stretch of the imagination. Um, if a new manager comes in, uh, he stays until the, the end of the season. I think he has to go back to the basics. I think uh, under Pep Clotet, for example, we were a team that is not playing the best football, but he knew that Duke, for example, can score goals at the far post when you cross for him, which is very simple, you know, simpler than what Karanka is trying to do, for sure. And that's what I would do. I would put uh, Gardner, Sonic in the middle, go for it from there. Hogan and Jutkiewicz, or Hogan and Sam Cosgrove. We have Cosgrove, a great team we have no idea yeah. what he can do yet, which is another bizarre thing. Mm -hmm. I don't, honestly don't think that, uh, yeah. you know, that, that, that uh, Karanka, if he's gone now, uh, he's, he's seen him for five minutes. Incredible, really. Uh, Lars, what do you think? Yeah, what, would you, what would you just, just up and at him and just uh, see what, what becomes of it? Yeah, what you call them. Obviously, they've got a going 4-4-2 four, four, against a couple of the teams we're playing might be a little difficult in the next few games. But, um, you know, the last four or five games, if we'd have had two, two up front the way we started the games, we could have been ahead. Uh, the game Saturday, uh, the two guy hit the post, but there was, you know, there was really no pressure on their goal most of the game. <laughs> and the, the thing that we've really got to watch out for is that, um, I don't know, we just, we just seem to lose our control and give the ball away. Like the game before last, in the first 15 minutes, we gave the ball away eight times, nine times. And we can't do that. Usually around 25 to 35 minutes, we start getting into all this trouble, giving up silly fouls, giving the balls away. Yeah. Going it's, behind the goal. At least, at least the manager. Listen, we're running out of time and John is coming back. Uh, we can wave to you, John, because we can't speak to you at the minute. But thanks ever so much for coming on. Um, Ralph, um, we're going to get you over because your knowledge is tremendous. And um, it's great to see somebody in that part of the world supporting Blues. Uh, we wish you well. Thanks. And um, keep right on to you. And uh, yeah, let's hope that the clubs stay up. Uh, Loss, thanks in New York. Uh, John's gone again. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we'll get John on again because he's, uh, he's a great character. So many thanks. Uh, Karanka going. Well, Blue's going to stay up. We shall see. We'll do a few more of these, I think, before the end of the hey, season. Chris, getting very exciting. You go. If he's you ever back. get um, Sufi over, let me know and I'll try and get over and buy him a pint. Absolutely. Yeah. Guys, thanks so much. Let me, touch, let me know, all right? If you like the program, please Thank uh, you. subscribe and like and all that sort of stuff. And uh, many thanks all. Keep right on once again. Keep right on, guys. Take care. Keep right on.